and welcome Bill Markham. You know, you are a neat guy because you do so many different things, and I, I appreciate how you have the passion to do all the things that you do, and I know we're going to get into it a little bit more, but, you know, as a father, as a pastor, I said father first. Yeah, I, I, like didn't, that. Right? I like that. But at the same time, and a coach, right, yep. a volleyball coach, and, and all of these things, and you seem like you you just got the fountain of youth, so, you know what, I got to find out. <laughs> wow, I've heard that. that. That's great. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, you have a unique uh, journey of how you came to not only ministry, but that makes up who uh, Pastor Bill Markham is. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us how did God capture your heart and not only uh, raise you up here, but uh, the U.S. and the Orient? Yeah, so, well, my story actually begins a generation ago with my mom. Yeah. And so my mom grew up in the Pacific Northwest. Mm. Her stepdad was a Navy man, and neither of them were followers of Christ. And so as a result of that, experienced a really difficult upbringing. Uh, both parents were emotionally abusive, uh, very difficult financial situation. Grew up on, you know, the stereotypical wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. And I, and I remember this story my mom used to tell me that when she was eight years old, um, she had three siblings, and she can remember waiting for her parents and all their friends to pass out in the living room uh. um, so that she could actually get food because otherwise she wouldn't eat. And then at eight years old, something supernatural happened. Someone invited her to a small little country church where they were doing this vacation Bible school back yeah, in the day. And, yeah, yeah. And for the first time, she heard that there's a God who loves, lo loved her. And that transformed her. And the, the fun thing about this story is that that church, they were doing a, a contest, whoever brought the most people on a bike. And she had yeah. never owned a bike. So yeah. she begged her parents and uncles and aunts and cousins, nephews, siblings, anyone who would come. And they all did. And as a result of that, my entire family was transformed. Mm. And so that began the journey. So I grew up in a home uh, with a mom who was incredibly passionate about people, uh, passionate for God, and that was instilled in me at a very young age. And so I just saw her, her modeling, and I, I knew that there was something more when yeah. I looked at her, and I knew her love for people was something I wanted to emulate. So that was actually the beginning of my journey. My mom was the one who led me to faith. Yeah. My mom was the one who actually walked through wow. major spiritual How did adult. she do that? Well, I mean, it was just in relationship. I mean, I, I can remember when we'd be in church and I would be bored. I know you're not supposed to be in, in church, but as a kid you were. <laughs> she, she would draw it on these little cards, like, like little pictures of the Ten Commandments, and that's how I actually learned the Ten Commandments. Okay. It was in church on a Sunday evening when I, for the first time, became aware of my own sin, my own limitation, yeah. and I began to cry. And it was my mother who navigated that with me. <clears throat> you know, she asked me what was wrong, and I couldn't articulate it. But she led me through a process of understanding this is why I was feeling this, and how I could receive God's incredible forgiveness. That's beautiful. Um, it was my mom when I was 12 who encouraged me through baptism. And yeah. eight. so she was really kind of the standard for me. Yeah. And then when I was, you know, I went through my, you know, typical rebellious teenage years, but at 17, God really challenged me with, what are you doing with your life? Mm. And why are you here on this planet? And it was that, at that moment I decided to, to follow in, in full-time ministry. Wow, at 17. At 17 years old, I made that decision. Wow. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, that that's fascinating because I know with myself, my mom has had such a, a big impact on my life as well. And, you know, you hear a lot of athletes and people say, hey, mom, yeah. thanks, mom. Yeah. You know, when you, uh, you, you look at your mom, she also gave and instilled a lot of confidence in you because they told you that you were stupid, that you couldn't learn. And, and then uh, they, yeah. there was something that turned around. Talk to us about it. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So, yeah, my story is rooted in what I call the power of presence. Yeah. So we, we are all present, um, positively or negatively, each and every one of us. And yeah. we have to actually take that very seriously, whether it's a parent, teacher. So I had a teacher who, when I was younger, told me literally I was stupid called my mom and dad in and wanted me to go into special education. And the reality was it was because I just simply moved from Thailand where I grew up to Canada and I didn't fit in. And so because of my social limitation, it was actually manifesting itself in my educational prowess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, not that I was super ever academically inclined, but, yeah. but so, so I, I remember that label was stuck on me. Mm. And I actually believed it. this is the power of words and what we say about each other and to each other. So that word stuck in me, and as a result, I barely made it through high school. If it hadn't been for athletics, I would have not made it through high, through high school. But it was my mom re constantly reminding me of my identity, who I really was, that actually held me even through that difficulty. Mm. And so that lie had to be broken. Actually, many, many lies had to be broken in my life. Yeah. And one was that I couldn't do it. So, so I, I've, I've struggled all my life with the lie that you're a failure, any kind of failure, any kind of setback, you're inadequate. But it was my mom's word 
and I believe, of course, inspired by God's word and, and who, yes. and God said I was. Yeah. But she kept reminding me, no, this is who you are. This is who you are. And so that presence was what actually was a catalyst for change. You know, and, and presence is a, a big word, and I, and I love that. You know, when you, you start talking about presence, it takes away labels. And so yes. often, I mean, you came to Central, and you became an, an, an associate pastor, assistant pastor, yeah. and now you've, you've actually uh, taken the reins of that, and it's grown from 400 to now over 2,000, and it's moved along yeah. under your leadership. But is, is that the same thing, uh, presence and value and the labels? Talk to us about Central and, and your, your philosophy. Well, so I'll be honest, uh, 19 years ago, when, before we moved here, I was really frustrated. I was frustrated with the reality that I saw in the church the ortho, what I call orthodoxy. We had the right ideas, the yeah. theology, the training, but I didn't see it always translating into orthopraxy, how we uh. practiced. And we talk about presence and the power of presence, but we weren't really present. And I don't mean this in a critical way, it was just an awareness for me. I wanted to be a part of a group of faith mm. who really took this presence thing seriously. Yeah. Present in every situation that you are. Because I think sometimes we think we have to be experts and that's the limitation, that's the lie the enemy tells us. Yeah. When you read the stories of, of faith, people just encountered the presence of God and as a result of that, they were able to do incredible things. Yeah. So I wanted to be a part of that. So when we came here, I said to Darren, who was the lead pastor then, I said, I just want a place that really gets this. How can we be present in the community, present in people's lives to see transformation? Yeah. Because it's not about us anyway. Right. And so 19 years ago, we came here and it's been a long journey, a fun journey, an amazing journey of growth. But I think you're right. It's when we understand presence yeah. and that people have value and, and deserve to belong regardless of lifestyle, regardless of choices, mistakes, failures, whatever. And so how do we reverse the label? Yes. By being present to place a new label on them. You're loved. Wow. You know, that, that's so powerful because I know there's someone out there right now that needs to remove the label. And I need, you know, and even our, our time, because we're going to be praying yeah. during prayer week and everything. Yeah. We'll find out a little bit more about the journey. But how do they get the label off? And could you help them with that right now? Yeah. So, so you and I were talking earlier about when, when my son was born, my first son, it was a world changer for me. Um, I, I, I knew in my head about God's love, and I had experienced it to a degree, but when I held that child, mm. who was completely helpless, mm. really could offer nothing, yeah. couldn't communicate, couldn't do anything for me, and yet I would have done anything. I would have moved anything on this earth yeah. for that child. I realized for the first time how much God loved me, mm. and that his identity, as he's grown up, I continually remind him, you're a Markham. So yes. I, have, I have this great story of it, a time when he was in grade one, and he was being bullied. Yeah. And, and I told him, and, and so for a whole week he came home and he was downcast and he was like, and I couldn't get, I mean, my son is vibrant. Yeah. I mean, he, he is a very vocal, uh, vocal person. So he hadn't been for a week. And so at the end I said, what's going on? And he finally told me and I said, I'll tell you what, on Monday, you're gonna go to school, but it's gonna be different. He's like, how? I'm gonna be there. Mm. So I have this crazy story about how I dealt with that. We don't have time for that. Yeah. But, but essentially he, what changed for him was the reality and the understanding that his father was present. Yeah. And when you actually get a hold of that, that you have a God in heaven who not only created you, but is actually present, yeah. that is a game changer for you. It actually it removes, it removes the labels that this world wants to stick on you, because this world will. Yeah. This world will try to tell you who you are, identify you. We're in a identity confusion stage in our culture today. Yeah. So you need to be rooted in who you really are, and God says who you are, and you're loved. Yeah. That's it, if you can get that, that that's the changer. Amen. Well, Pastor Bill Markham, we're going to be praying a little bit later in the program, Absolutely. and I just love your heart and you. such a passion for what God is doing. But uh, stay tuned, because up next, prayer goes, when the prayer goes up, a sudden tragedy ends up giving a woman a new life. Don't go away. Thank you. <laughs> 